Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Talos of Tech. We haven't done an unboxing on this channel for a while, so since there's not a lot of Apple products I'm interested in this year, I figured obviously we should go to the company that I'm most excited for. Can't wait to see that. Notch. But in the spirit of the Pixel brand, and you guys know how much I love this product that I've talked about it so much in the past and about how much I love it, wouldn't it be fun to unbox it for you guys today? So without further ado, let's open this bad, bad boy up. Okay, so first of all, it's a, it's a very wide box. Oh, look at this. We got a big blue opening on the back that says turns heads. Yeah, they, they forgot a word here. It should say turns heads away. Because everyone goes, thousand dollars, really? More specifically, will it tell us on the box which one I got here? Ah, yes, I didn't stop at the base model storage. And by the way, I'm working with a fan to unbox this. I'm not keeping it. I'm just going to open it up, review it, give you my actual first-hand thoughts on it, and then we're returning it. We got the seventh generation Intel Core IC processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, and I figured it'd be fun to get the one that runs Chrome OS. That makes sense, right? Because there's there's lots of different versions of the Chromebook that run different operating systems. Let's see if we can open this plastic here, first of all. I guess I don't need my knife yet. Slide that off. Oh my god, the static friction. It's attacking me. All right, I think this is the type of thing we can just slide up like this. Oh, come on, Google, you got this, you got this. Oh, hey, there it is, there's that smell. Here, check it out. We're greeted by an aluminum front with that big slab of glass on the top for the sake of aesthetics. Luckily, they put a tab here, so that makes lifting it up a bit easier. All right, that's pretty thin. Uh, it's got a it's got a decent amount of weight to it, and I just realized what is what is this thing at the bottom here? Is this like a rubber base thing? I've only briefly looked at these in the past before. I haven't really gotten up close in person. Pull this plastic off here. Oh, goodness, it looks very boxy on the back. Doesn't that look like plastic from the back? with the screws and stuff like that. Can you open it up? Can you upgrade your Pixel Book? That makes sense. I can't open 80 tabs in Google Chrome. I need more RAM. All right, well, here's our premium look. That's a very, very expensive Chromebook right there. Got volume rocker and power buttons on the side. Just the two USB-C ports and a headphone jack. So Google also agrees, keeping it on the laptop, but not the phone. Now we'll open it up here and here we go. There. Ooh, look at that. Okay, it's almost like they combined two tablets together. These are very, very thin and almost equal in width, the display part from the keyboard part. And then we've got these little rubber base pads that you rest your palms on while typing. Hope those don't get dirty. Doesn't seem to be much branding other than that Google logo on the back. And first thing that comes to mind, at least when I'm looking at this thing, is yes, while it's very light, there's a lot of empty space here that I, I would have liked to seen some speakers, but I guess we'll have to find out what the speakers are like on this guy. But not without looking at what else is in this box. That's important, right? We gotta look at what else comes with it. Ah, yes, USB-C charge brick and USB-C cable, along with some documentation. Let's get started. What what does it mean? It's just gonna say, plug your Pixel Book in to charge. Oh, does, not, does it not come with a charge? Let's find out. Wake up, please. It's got a little indentation in the glass there. Is the speaker on top of the screen? That's interesting. See, when I usually get my $1,000 MacBooks, you can just open them up and they'll turn on. Let's see, hold the Google system button. It's saying I have to plug it in. Huh, that's interesting. Maybe they ship it with a dead battery. Google Pixelbook, ladies and gentlemen. Turning heads everywhere, right? Is that all what's in the box? Man, that's kind of a thick box. That's okay. All right, now to turn this guy on, we have our very, very square USB-C charge brick. Slide these prongs out. I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, now we can finally turn it on with our USB-C charge brick. Who needs MagSafe right there? Okay, you're plugged in, Pixelbook. Now what? You're gonna turn on for us? Can you show us what you're gonna do? There you go, there's Google. See, so if you guys want a comparison here, we have my 10 and a half inch iPad right next to it with noticeably thinner bezels. Okay, welcome, let's get started. But you know what? Because this is designed to be used as both a laptop and a tablet, let's go into tablet mode. I actually haven't reviewed something that can do this. Good thing I remembered that because it'd be really sad if this was a laptop that didn't do that and I just bended it in half live here. Okay, let's go. So I love, <laughs> I actually love the process of holding a tablet and feeling the keys be pressed behind. <laughs> Every time I hold this thing, I can press all the keys on the back. Hopefully those are deactivated. Ah, see, I'm trying to connect to my Wi-Fi network and I'm in tablet mode. So when it asks for me to type in the password, no keyboard pops up. So I, I would like a virtual 
mobile keyboard to pop up if we are gonna be using tablet mode. Not trying to be too nitpicky here, but I mean also, I just am because, I don't know, I'm used to like when iOS wants you to search something, they bring up a keyboard so you can type it in. They don't have to be like, go back into laptop mode and purchase our keyboard. This was my problem with a lot of Surface devices. If you didn't have a keyboard docked to it, they didn't like the virtual keyboard popping up very much. So let's type password again. There's our keyboard. How elegant, how beautiful. All right, I just entered the password network connection error. Uh oh. All right, we're selling our soul to the devil now. Your connection is not right. Oh my God, this stuff keeps moving around. I'm wondering if my hands touching the keyboard on the back is affecting because the terms and conditions keep scrolling around randomly. At the top, it for a second just said, this is not a secure network. Attackers could hack into your Wi-Fi. Okay, good to know, Pixelbook. Oh, it's checking for updates right out of the box. We gotta make sure we stay up to date here. I am glad I can charge it from either side. That's, that's very convenient. Okay, now we're signing into Gmail. Once again, keyboard not popping up, even though they're expecting you to type something. Just to add that extra step once again. All right, I believe we're signed in. I'm feeling all the keys be pressed every time I hold this thing backwards. It's a very odd feeling. I'm sorry I keep bringing that up. But every time I'm holding it like this, all the keys on the back are being pressed around. Okay, we're going to once again agree to Google Play, terms of service now. And there we go. Just like that, we're booted up. We got our Google Assistant ready. We can hit next here. And now I'm excited to start installing all of those premium apps that are going to take advantage of that Intel i7 core, that 16 gigs of RAM, and the half terabyte SSD. Just a sec, ask it questions, tell it to do things. It's your personal Google, always ready to help. Oh, the wallpaper shut off. Uh-oh. Give your new assistant permission to help you. I want to give it so much permission. Okay, we'll turn that on. So is this the type of laptop that I can use in this weird orientation if I want to? See, if I want to play something, but I don't want the keyboard right here, I just have the keyboard rest on the desk behind it. That way you can, you can play things like that, which is kind of nice given it is actually annoying that on the iPad Pro, it's very difficult to mount it straight up and down like a laptop can. What's nice about these 360 degree laptops is that you can swivel them all the way around and have them stand straight up if you'd like them to. I will also mention, even though this thing is just turning on and signing into Google, it's getting noticeably hot on the back. Like the bottom piece of the Pixel Book here is getting very, very warm. Maybe it's just because it's never charged before, but oh, wait, the battery's not at zero. So it did have a battery. It just needed to be plugged in in the first place. Okay. Howdy, Andrew. Okay, let's take a tour. I like how they have all these pictures of Chromebooks here, but they don't have the Pixel Book. Take a tour. We use the launcher to quickly get to new apps and activities. Okay. We can check my status and okay, I think we're ready. But before we wrap things up here, we need to unbox the essential accessory Google wants us to buy with the Pixel Book. Of course, the Pixel Book Pen. Now I'm very curious about this particular stylus because there's not a lot of other stylus on the market that are $100 apart from the Apple Pencil. And since Google is basically trying to model everything Apple does, let's see how they rival it. So I lift, I lift up on it like this. Got an I for information, all right. Lift it up right there and there you have it. The Pixel Pen, wow. This thing is extremely light. Does it have the batteries in it? Maybe they make you plug this thing in the second you open it too. Oh, but wait a minute, I can't plug it in. That's not what it does, it needs a battery. Does it include one down here? It's got a little battery icon right there. Very tiny battery, but can I get that out please? Oh my God, I've never actually used a quadruple A battery before. I never had a need to. I never know why I needed a quadruple A battery. These things are tiny. Oh my God, you could lose that. You could lose that very easily. All right, so I'm gonna take a wild guess and say this turns, yes. All right, so we unscrew it like this. This is how we charge, oh my God. <laughs> this feels like a, <laughs> this feels like some kind of smoking device or how you sneak drugs into an airport or something. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, kids. All right, airports, like they'll figure this stuff out. So do they have instructions on which way it goes? Okay, positive goes down in like that. <laughs> this feels like, I feel like I'm an assassin. Okay, then we tighten it like this. And now we have loaded the quadruple A battery into the Pixelbook pin. Why can't they ship it with the battery inside it if you're gonna include it anyway? I don't know. Apple doesn't make you put in batteries back when they had double A's that came with the magic keyboard and mouse, but now you charge them. Yes, it's weird to charge them, but you don't have to go out and buy new batteries. So, okay, we got the battery plugged in here. We have our Pixel Book charged and ready here. So I believe I'm just gonna hold this button if I'm right about this. I don't see any indicator lights on 
on the pen itself. So I'm not sure if something's gonna pop up on the Pixel Book or I don't know why I tried to listen to it just now. I'm not sure if it's gonna play a sound of any kind. It's it's definitely a lot lighter than an Apple Pencil. It feels very hollow, actually. Maybe I do have to go into some kind of settings. Checking for Bluetooth. Oh my God, all we get is a bunch of unknown or unsupported device. Oh, it's connected already. That was easy. I just realized that I didn't have to pair it. So wait, what's the battery for? Can I take the battery out and will it still work? There wasn't any type of pairing part. Good, that grinding of unscrewing this thing is, ah! It's giving me goosebumps. It's like licking cardboard. Ugh, I don't like unscrewing that. I don't. Okay, excess our uh, hidden drugs here. Does this still work? Okay, no. So it does need a battery in it. We're, we're confirmed about that. And for $100, this feels, this feels, uh, that grinding sound this makes is, is uh, sorry, I don't like that. Okay, so I don't have to pair the Pixel Pen uh, via Bluetooth, which is nice. You just throw the battery in there and hopefully this lasts you quite a long time. You can open up YouTube here with my stylus. Look at this. This display likes to swivel quite a bit. You know, I'm just lightly tapping on it. Look at, look at the rotations here. Oh my god. Wow, look at this scrolling beauty there. Okay, it's it's trying to keep up here. <laughs> but look how much this, this display wobbles when I'm just tapping it. That that's quite a bit of display wobble, you know? Now that I'm now that I'm seeing it in person. I don't think I want to use the touch screen when it's in this method. I think the only time to use the touch screen would be when it's in tablet mode, and I can feel all the keys being pressed back here, so that's nice. Okay, and there you have it. That has been the unboxing of the Pixel Book and the Pixel Pen. This whole getup, uh, if you were to keep this and you weren't sending it back like I'll be then would have cost you like seventeen hundred sixteen hundred dollars so that'll be really fun for writing our uh, Google Docs on but hey there's our wallpaper so of course a review is coming soon I'll give you my impressions of this thing and uh, I want to know your impressions based on this unboxing video I haven't seen too many pixel book unboxings but what are your thoughts definitely let me know in the comments below this is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one